So in the previous video, we got it to the point where we computed all of the sums to be able to plug into our correlation coefficient formula. So now we're going to plug it in, and we're going to use our calculator to simplify it. Um, we have our formula, and then we have all the values, and we have n. So let's substitute. So for r, r is going to be equal to, now remember, n is 6, and the sum of xy is this 20.9. So 6 times... 20.9 minus the sum of x, which is 180. I'm sorry, uh, the sum of xy is not 20.9. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Um, it's actually going to be this 749.4 or 729.4, excuse me. 729.4. And then minus sum of x. Now, sum of x is going to be the 20.9. So, again, apologies for that. And then 180 is going to be our sum of y. So, this is 20.9 multiplied by 180. All right, so that's good for the numerator, finally. For the denominator, first radical, square root of 6 times the sum of x squared. And sum of x squared is what we got, this 79.99. So 79.99 minus the sum of x quantity squared. Now, sum of x was this 20.9. So many arrows. Let me erase some of these arrows. In fact, all of them. And sum of x squared is going to be 20.9 squared. So. And we'll punch that into the calculator in a minute. Um, and then also we're going to go through and do the same thing for the y values. So that's 6 times the quantity of the sum of y squared. And sum of y squared is going to be this 6956. And we're going to subtract from that. That's a 5 in English. Sorry about that. Um, sum of y squared, which is going to be 180 squared. All right, so now our job is to punch this in the calculator correctly. And remember the process that we do. We do the numerator, and then we take care of what's underneath of each of those radicals, and we compute all of that first. Okay, so um, first one we're going to do is just stick everything into the calculator in the numerator. So that is going to be our 6 on the calculator, so it's going to be 6 times at 729.4, and we're going to subtract from that the 20.9, which was the sum of x, times the 180, which was the sum of y. And we end up with 614.4. Right, so let's just copy that over. All right. First radical into our calculator. 6 times 79.99 minus 20.9 squared, 43.13. And then we're just going to do the, sec the second one for the y's. So that's 6 times the sum of y squared, which was that 69.56 minus 180 squared. All right, so um, 9336. So in order for our numbers, we get 43.13, and then we're going to multiply that by um, 9336, I believe it was. Let me go back and check, 9336. All right. Now, closer to the end, we're going to multiply the two radicals together. Um, we're going to keep the numerator the same. When multiplying the radical, remember we have to do that trick where we have to hit the right arrow. Right, so second square root, 43.13, and then we're going to hit the right arrow. All right, so we're going to get out of there. We're going to multiply it by the square root of 9336. All right, and before I hit enter, let me just verify that those are the numbers again. 4313-9336, 4313-9336. We're good. We're going to hit enter. We get 634.556. So 634.556. Now we're finally going to shove that into the calculator, and hopefully we get a really nice answer out of this, which it looks like we're going to get.
and we end up with 96.82, so not 0.968 uh, for a correlation coefficient. So after all that, you get 0.968. And the question is, at this point, okay, well, we did part D, where we went through and computed it, but what does this really mean to us? All right, so let's go all the way back, because we probably forgot what the question was. Part D was, or sorry, part E was to be able to compute R, and then part E is to interpret R. All right, so let's go all the way back up. A long ways away. Remember we had like this little table here, and we said that if R is between 0.7 and 1, there's a strong association. In fact, isn't 0.96, whatever it was, 0.961 or 968, I can't remember, um, 0.968, that's really close to 1. All right, so... For part E, we could say that since R is very close, and we probably shouldn't use the word very, but it's close to 1, we have a strong positive association. Even though it is very strong, we don't like to say the word very unless we really, really have to. Um, it's just usually implying the definition of the word. Right, so I'm going to give myself a little more room here to work, really close things out, uh, or maybe possibly, potentially. No, okay. Well, it doesn't want to. That's fine. I can deal with it. Oh, it's not liking it too much, but that's okay. We could just go back up here. And say it's a strong positive association. All right, so let's go back up. Um, let's remember that number 0.968. You go all the way back up here. Um, does the value you interpreted compute uh, correspond to the scatter plot? And the answer for this is yes, because if you look at the scatter plot, remember we said it was linear, it was strong. In fact, we said it was very strong, and it was positive. Okay, so we don't care about linear, right? Because remember, we can't tell the, the type of association from R. But what we can say is that both the correlation coefficient, so uh, I think this is part F, both R and scatter suggest, and I want to put this in parentheses, a strong positive association. So the answer is yes. Okay, invariably it does. So that takes care of letter F. All right, so do the values. Um, are there any lurking variables? All right, so this goes a little bit more into your interpretation of this. But just an idea of what a lurking variable might be, right? Um, generally, and you may or may not know this, but generally, if somebody's a little bit more kind or empathetic, that usually lends themselves to being a good teacher. It also lends itself to being a little bit more physically attractive, apparently. All right, so um, might be kindness, all right, is associated with both um, quality and hotness. All right, so if a faculty member is really nice um, or empathetic, I'll put that in parentheses. That's certainly a lurking variable. Um, it, sometimes it's even the subject of the course, okay? Um, usually if, a, if an instructor teaches a, a class that's a lot of fun, um, unlike statistics, then you could probably improve the, the perception of that faculty member, all right? So for instance, if I'm teaching a really cool subject, um, like for instance, um, I don't know, the study of Marvel characters or something like that, um, that could pr prove or improve the quality of the instruction because the students really like the class. And it could also improve the hotness perception of the instructor. So just some ideas of to what lurking variables might exist, right? And then finally, there's probably a summary type of question. 
um, using everything that we've done, stated conjecture regarding the average rating of a teacher and the hotness percentage, all right? And I think almost everything that we've shown from this study suggests that we can say that the data suggests, okay, so we can't say for certain, but we can say that the data suggests, okay, more like congressional sort of language, that there seems to be a strong positive association between um, the quality rating and the hotness rating or the hotness percent. All right, now we have to be really careful because those are the things that we're actually measuring. Right, so we go all the way back to the beginning, and remember, we have an average rating of the quality of the instructor as well as the percent of hot. All right, so whenever we are describing what it is that our data suggests, make sure we're very specific. So it's not just hotness, but it's the hotness percentage, all right? And it's just the average quality rating. So we should say between the, the average quality rating. All right, so hopefully this is a good overview for you all as to how to kind of tie everything that we've seen thus far in this section with respect to association, um, with respect to being able to look at lurking variables, the correlation coefficient, and all those sorts of measures.